Okay, quick question. Okay, good evening, guys, to everyone, those who just joined. Okay, so my name is Yavinesh, by the way. And before we start, may I know how many of you all first time attending my training? Anyone here first time? Huh? First time seeing my face? Just type me in the chat box. Okay, first time attending my training. Can you just type in the chat me? Can I see how many me there? Okay, how many of y'all more than uh, one time? Can you just uh, type in the chat? Second time, third time, fourth time, just type yes. Type yes, please. Okay, assume first time. Okay, Andy, yes. All right, guy three. Okay, Moon, yes. Saraya, Ramesh, all right. Come on, that's all. The rest gone missing. Okay, I hope uh, those who are the first timers, right? I hope you already installed a free packs. Okay, because we're going to do a practical work. And then as promised, okay, I'll be giving away a book. Okay, can you guys see the book? Okay, this is the Artifax book. All right. And this one, the book is worth uh, 250 ringgit. All right. So, but of course, I'm, I'm not going to just simply give it away. All right. So, you'll be answering some questions. So, uh, what apps to download? Okay. Uh, you need to install After Effects. Okay. This is After Effects class, right? So, you need to have After Effects. Do you do you have After Effects? Uh, okay, okay. If you know, don't have right. If you still want to follow the training, make sure you listen very very carefully and then you take note. Okay, because uh, when you are answering the quiz, right? Okay, maybe you'll be able to still answer that. Right. Still, uh, try to pay attention. All right, but uh, any any skill training, right? If you don't do immediately, you'll forget it. All right, so I will show a few steps and then you follow along. Show a few steps and then you follow. All right, by then, uh, uh, when you do that, you can remember, then you can practice it again. All right, but anyway, um, okay, uh, yes, uh, for your B, for your question, right? Okay, if you answer the question, right, the quiz, you get more than 50% answer correct then you'll get the certificate, all right? You answer more than 50%, correct answer, then you will get the certificate, all right? Okay, all right, let's get started. Okay, for those who doesn't know me, right? Okay, my name is Yavinesh, I do um, uh, Shaima. It will take some time, you can try to download you can go to Adobe website, you can download the trial version. It varied for seven days. You can search in Google Adobe After Effects trial. Okay, you can try. Okay, hope your internet speed is quite okay. Correct. Okay, uh, my name is Yavinesh. Okay, I do teach uh, Adobe software and also Autodesk software. All right, so from for previous classes, right, I've conducted uh, classes on Illustrator, Photoshop, okay, After Effects also, and also um, some other platform like Reskill platform. Anyone here doesn't know what is Reskill? Reskill. You can learn every day for free. Do you know that, Reskill? Okay, there is a various topic. Okay, doesn't know. Okay, later I'll, I will send you the link for you to uh, register there. Okay. All right. Okay, reskill. Uh, you can learn. Uh, uh, we call every day there be new topics from various uh, trainer from various countries. Okay, Indonesia, Philippines, India. Okay, and then where else? I think Vietnam or somewhere Thailand. Okay, Thailand, and then mostly it's from Malaysia. All right, various topic, and then you can choose the topic which uh, which one you want to attend. And I'm not sure currently whether it's a three month or six months free. All right, you can try that. Okay, I do do conduct training and that on that platform as well. Okay, let's get started. Let me share my screen. 
Okay, so today's topic is uh, on data visualization using After Effects. Okay, so basically, we will be, uh, we will be trying to uh, animate some graphs, okay, using After Effects. And then in future class, we will do tracking. Okay, for those who have seen the video, right, the video in uh, Facebook, okay, that video, there is, a, a, I think, two plays, two videos, two video clips, which in, we integrate the graph into the live video. Okay, that is what we call as camera tracking. Okay, it feels like as though the object is in the video itself. All right, we need to do tracking, but today's lesson not covering the tracking part, only the animation part of the graph animation and also using uh, Illustrator. Okay, anyone here familiar with Adobe Illustrator? Are you guys familiar with Adobe Illustrator? Okay, Shalihin, Shalihin, yes. Okay, Suraya, Azim, all right, great. Great, great. Okay, so we can actually import uh, Illustrator files into After Effects and then we can start to animate. All right, let me just uh, open my Illustrator After Effects. Okay, this is your first window that you're going to get. And then first we have new project, open project, and then previous, uh, previous project. All right, let's say I go to new project now. Okay, and then you'll be able to find uh, some panels here. One is on the left hand side here. This is project panel where it lists down all your assets. And then you have your composition panel where you can preview your video. And then at the bottom here, you have your timeline panel. Okay, timeline panel where you will be able to see the composition with all the layers. All right. And then on the right hand side, you have your preview panel. Okay, when I click the preview, it will be highlighted. Any panel, when you click, right, it will be highlighted in blue color. All right, that's one. And then you have effects and presets panel. Here, you have hundreds of effects here. So you need to search for the effect. All right, you need just to uh, key in the uh, keyword. For example, let's say I want to apply some uh, blur effect. So I just type BLU and then any effects with the BLU letter it will be shown here then i can choose from the whatever blur effect that i want all right this is just an example okay another thing if i'm going too fast right please let me know and then if you face any difficulties please let me know as well all right don't be shy jangan malu-malu okay nak tanya dalam bahasa melayu pun boleh tak ada masalah faham faham tak All right, great. Okay, so first thing what I'm going to do now, okay, after we open, uh, create a new project, okay, in After Effects, whenever we want to start to work on any project, we need to create a composition. All right, create composition. How do you create a composition? You go to, uh, on top here, there is a main menu, file, edit, composition. You go to composition and then choose new composition. Or shortcut is control N. Okay. Or can you see this, this button here? New composition. Here also you can click. All right. For example, I just click from here. New composition. And then you'll be getting a composition setting. Okay. This composition setting will be based on the output format that you're going to uh, create. For example, uh, we're going to upload a video on YouTube, let's say. Okay, then you set the size of the video accordingly. Or let's say I want to upload a video on Instagram post, let's say. Okay, then I need to choose a square size, for example. Okay, or let's say I want to upload a video for Instagram story, let's say. Then it needs to be a portrait size. Okay, portrait means 1080 by 1920. All right, so it depends on where we want to output, I mean, uh, place our video, okay? So you set the composition setting size accordingly. So first thing, go to composition, new composition, and then change the size to width 1920, height is 1080. Okay, why 1920, 1080? This is what we call as full HD, okay? This size is a full HD size. 
Okay, full HD size is a very common size in most of the devices. For example, television or computer screen or even handphone screen. Okay, even uh, iPad screen are not full HD. Uh, iPad screen is slightly different. And then uh, uh, basically most of the devices. And if you look at this uh, phone, right, if you hold it landscape, you get full HD, 1920, 1080. But if you hold it in portrait, right, uh, then you will get it in a opposite size. Okay, means the width is 1080, the height will be 1920. Okay, this is your resolution. Then after that, pixel aspect ratio. Okay, pixel aspect ratio, you just maintain as square pixel. All right, and also the frame rate. Okay, frame rate means how many images is played back per second. Okay, any video that we watch is actually sequence of images played back at certain speed. All right, so this is the speed of the images. All right, frame rate. Okay, if I click the frame rate, right, the arrow, I have more option. <clears throat> If you are using a uh, uh, lower end devices, like you know, like old phones, right? Very old phones. Okay, it doesn't support high frame rate, so you need to use a lower frame rate. That's one. And if your computer able to process higher frame rate, means you have a very high end game uh, spec computer. Okay, then you can choose a higher frame rate. Okay, uh, why higher frame rate? Because your video will be smoother, but our normal human eyes, right? It can capture up to 24 frames per second. Okay, more than that, it becomes blurry. Okay, that's why in movie, in cinemas, right? Whenever there is a fast object, there'll be a blur effect. We call it motion blur. All right? And even if you open your eyes and then you shake your head, try to shake your head very fast. Okay, everything in front of you become blurry. Okay, because our brain can process 24 frames per second. More than that, become blurry, right? So this one, for our general purpose video, for YouTube, for Instagram, for TikTok, for uh, whatever reason, lah, for presentation, for advertisement, okay, you can maintain at 25 or maximum you put 30, enough. If there is no specification, unless, uh, let's say your client coming uh, and ask you to create a video at certain frame rate, uh, then you can increase it. All right, or else you just maintain 25, enough. All right, okay, next, the resolution. Okay, this resolution is a preview resolution. No difference if you choose half, third, quarter, or whatever, just for preview. It will not affect your final output. Okay, so this one doesn't matter. For now, you can leave it as full. Okay, and then start time code, start with zero, and then duration. Okay, start time code or the duration. Can you see there is a two digit, two digit, two digit, two digit. Two, uh, sorry, one digit. Okay, the last two digit represent the frame. Okay, we choose 25 frame per second. So that means every 25 frame is equivalent to one second. So for example, if I type here 25, for example, and then I click somewhere around here, outside here, it becomes one second. You see, it becomes 31 here. Again, I type 25 here, and then I click here, it becomes 32. If I type 24, for example, then it will maintain at 24. 32 second, 24 frame. If I type 26, for example, okay, it will add one second, and also the frame remain one. Can you see that? 33, 0, 1. Okay, the last two digits is your frame, followed by seconds, and then minutes and hours. Faham tak semua orang? Um. Okay, alright. Okay, background color doesn't matter. You can put any color uh, for background color. Even though you choose a background color, it is still considered like transparent. Okay, because we didn't put any solid object. Okay, so color, you can just leave it as it is, then the kind okay. Okay, I want you all to create a new composition, follow this setting. Okay, the duration, you just put, uh, I don't know, let's say 20 seconds maybe, or 10 seconds enough. 
Okay, the duration, letak 10 second, then you click OK. Can you do that now? If done, let me know. Okay. Kalau ada soalan, boleh tanya sekarang. Okay, Samuel done. V, okay. Done. V, are you done? Okay, great. Okay, if done, please type in the chat box. Okay, four people done. Five done. Six. Seven. Eight. Eight people only. How about the rest? Just listening only. Okay, so I done. We done. Nine, ten. Okay, slow down. Dah. Okay, all right. I'm going to proceed now. Please take a look at my screen. Okay, I click OK now. Okay, once you click OK, right? Okay, you will see Comp 1 on your project panel. That's one. And then in your composition panel, also you will see Comp 1. And then at your timeline, also you will see Comp 1. Okay, COM1 means composition one. All right, so currently our composition, it's blank. Nothing is there. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a circle first. All right, to draw a circle, okay, what I do. Okay, on top here, there are some tools here, toolbar here. Okay, the first one is your selection tool. Okay, there is an arrow there. And then after that, you have your hand tool here to pan. And then you have your zoom tool. Okay, and then you move, move, move. Okay, there is a camera tools. Okay, and then there is a rotate. And then there is a pen behind tool. Okay, why I cannot see my this thing? Okay, pen behind tool. Okay, in bracket, it says anchor point. <clears throat> okay, so this tool is used to move the anchor point, basically. All right, later we will see what is anchor point. <clears throat> okay, after that, we have rectangle tool. If I click and hold my rectangle tool, right? I have rounded rectangle, ellipse tool, polygon tool, star tool. Okay. If you want to draw a circle or a square size, a square box, okay, we can use a rectangle tool to draw square or rectangle shape. If you want to draw a circle, we use ellipse tool to draw ellipse shape or a circle shape. All right. And then polygon, of course, lah, polygon, and then you can change the number of sides and all that. Okay, pentagon, hexagon, heptagon, whatever con, you can use the polygon tool. And also same goes for star. Okay, currently on the icon, it shows only five corners there, right? Okay, five points. So you can increase the number of points. Let's say you want to draw, uh, you know, the uh, Malaysian flag. Okay, you can change the, the points to 14 points. All right. So for now, I want to draw a circle. So I click on the ellipse tool. All right. And then when I draw, right, using the ellipse tool, I click and drag. Okay, if you don't hold your shift key, you get ellipse shape. Okay, while you are dragging, hold your shift key. Okay, you will get a nice circle shape, something like this. You understand? Understand or not? Okay, I'm going to repeat one more time. Okay, you click and hold. Tekan, jangan lepas. Alright? And then you choose ellipse tool. You click and drag. Jangan lepas mouse. And then hold your shift key. Okay? You will get a perfect circle. Alright? Then you let go your mouse. Let go your shift. Alright? So after you draw a circle. And then you go to. There is a fill option. Fill color. Stroke option. Stroke color. Okay, let's say I don't want the fill color. Okay, so I go to fill option and then I choose none. 
Then I click OK. Then I go to Stroke option. I choose Solid Color. And then I click OK. If I want to change the color of the stroke, then only I go to Stroke Color. Then I can change my whatever color that I want. Something like this, let's say. Then I click OK. And then beside that, there is a Stroke Width. You can click and drag to change the value. Hold your mouse cursor, uh, mouse button and then drag okay, to make it thicker a bit. Okay, once done, you can click back your selection tool. All right, can you do this? Try first. If you've got any problem, please let me know. Click and drag using the ellipse tool. Hold your shift key and then drag. And then after that, choose fill option none. Click and hold, Samuel, click and hold the rectangle tool. Click and hold. Click and hold your mouse button. Sir, mm. I can't find the, the button to press the ellipse tool. I mean, the on top there, where the pen tool and the type tool. Okay, do you have a rectangle tool there? No. No rectangle tool also? Yeah. No pen tool also? No. Oh, no tool at all? Yeah, no tool at all. Yeah. Okay, you go to window. Okay. Okay, and then you go to the, 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 the tools. Okay, thank you, sir. All right. Okay, uh, for your information, right? Okay, any panel, if it is missing, Okay, if let's say, for example, I don't have my project panel, let's say I close my project panel, I close my effect control, I click all this, okay, and then I close my timeline. Okay, now my interface is totally different, right? Okay, so I can go to window and then I can get all my panels back from here, from Windows menu. All right, so one is I can go to effect control and then window again, I go to timeline. Okay, window again, I go to a project or, or another option is I can go to window, workspace, and then I go to reset default. Okay, reset default, you will get back your default setting. Okay, how to change the fill color? Uh, SH, not fill color. I want stroke color. Fill color, I want none. You go to fill option. Can you see the word fill, F-I-L-L, -L, fill, the word fill. Click the fill option. Click the fill word. Then it will open up fill option, choose none. And then stroke option. Can you see my cursor? Stroke option. Click the stroke option, choose solid color. Then click OK. Then only you change the stroke color. Okay. No fill color. So make sure fill option, none. Okay, are you guys done? If still have problem, please let me know. If done, just type in the chat box, done. Anyone done? I just need a circle only. Nothing else. Draw a circle while drawing. Make sure you press the shift key. If you don't press shift, it will become an ellipse shape. 
Okay, Samuel Dan, Moon, Shahima Dan, Ramesh. Okay. <coughs> Three, four, five. Okay, five people done. How about the rest? Mana yang lain? Two, seven, done. Cepat, cepat, cepat. Ada problem, let me know. Eight, two more, two more percent. Okay, Malaysia done. One more. I'm waiting. Okay, I'm going to proceed now. Please take a look at my screen. Okay, I'm not sure uh, the rest, uh, how come never reply. All right, so make sure you try. Huh? Make sure you try. All right, so after you complete drawing, okay, just to, just to refresh one more time, I go to my rectangle tool, right? You can see there is a rectangle box beside the pen. You click and hold, you choose ellipse tool. And then you hold your shift key and then you drag. Okay, after you drag, you go to fill option. Choose none. Click OK. Stroke option. Choose solid color. Click OK. And then stroke color. Click the stroke color. Change the color. Click OK. And then the stroke width. Again, increase or reduce the stroke width. Okay, we're going to try to animate this stroke. All right. Okay, to animate the stroke. All right. So, for example, this is a full circle. Okay. If you want to animate this, right, what you can do is you go to your layer. Okay, this is your timeline. At the bottom here, this is your timeline. You can see there is a shape layer one. Okay, shape layer one. And then you go to collapse and then ex expand back. Okay, you'll see content and then transform. Okay, content and then transform. All right. And then after that, under content, there is an ellipse one. All right, and then you have ellipse path, stroke, fill, transform ellipse. Okay, there is two transform now. One is transform layer, which is they didn't put the name layer there. Another one is transform ellipse. Okay, if I expand the transform, right, there is an anchor point, position, scale, rotation, opacity. Okay, anchor point is the center point of that layer. All right, anchor point is the center point of the layer. To move the center point of the layer, you go to your pen behind tool. Okay, when I click the pen behind tool, and then I can click and drag this center point. Can you see it is snapping, snapping to the center of the object while I'm moving because my snapping option is turned on. All right. If you don't on the snapping option, right, while using the pen behind tool, you won't know where exactly you are putting your anchor point. All right. So why do we need to move the anchor point? Okay. For example, if I click and drag the rotation, can you see that my circle is not spinning properly? All right. That's why you have to move your anchor point. For example, I undo back. I go to check the snapping option for pen behind tool. And then I can click and drag. Now, if I rotate, right? Let's say I go to rotation here. Okay. It will rotate to the center of the object. Okay. Uh, moving the anchor point is important when you are like animating a tire, for example. Okay. Let's say you have an image of a, a tire, a car tire, right? Okay. A car wheel. And then you can move the anchor point of that object so that when you spin, animate the tire it will rotate properly. All right. Okay, so this is anchor point. Anchor point is the center point of the layer. And then you have your position. 
For position, you have x value, y value. There is two values here, x and y. So if I click and drag the x value, right, it will move along the x axis or the horizontally. Okay. And next value is y value. Y value moving vertically or up and down. All right. This is position. And then after that, you have scale. When I click and drag the scale, right, it will become bigger or smaller. Okay. It will happen in both direction. Okay. Y and x value. Okay. If you look at here, right, there is an icon like a chain. Okay. This is a constraint proportion. If I uncheck this, right, and then if I change one of the value, it will be distorted. Okay. We don't want that. Sometimes, yes. Okay. Sometimes if you want to scale in one direction, you uncheck this and then you just click and drag one of the value. But for in this case, uh, let's say I put 100, 100, and then constraint proportion again. All right. So this scale and then rotation. Okay. Rotation, there is two values here. There is first value 0x and then 0 degree. 0x means how many cycle? How many 360 degree? All right. One cycle equivalent to 360 degree. So means when I type 1x, right? 1, enter. You can see there is 1x there. That means 360 degree. Faham tak? Rotation ni. So make sure whenever you change the rotation, right? Never ever simply change the first value. You only change the second value. All right. You as a beginner, okay, make sure you double check which one you are actually choosing. And then opacity. Okay, opacity is transparency. All right. You're reducing the transparency of that layer. All right. When you reduce the transparency, you are not actually changing the color, but you are fading it away a bit. Okay, if you put something at the back, then you can see the object at the back. Okay, just for demo purpose, let's say, for example, I go to uh, import some image, let's say. Okay, let's say I just simply import this. I, okay, this is a back P format. Okay, for example, I put it behind the circle. Now, opacity is 100. Okay, you don't see the object at the back. If I reduce the opacity, then you can see partially of that object which is at the back. Okay, so this is the transparency. All right, opacity. Okay, all right. Now, let's say I'm going to delete this. Delete the image here. Delete. All right. The animation that we're going to do is as though like uh, if you've seen the sample, right? The sample video. Okay, it will be moving from uh, one point and then it will grow to a certain value. Okay, how we can do that? We apply an effect. If you click the layer one, shape layer one, and then you go to the content here, same row with the content, you will see an add button here. Add with the arrow here. Click that arrow and then you choose trim path. Okay, trim path, and then you will be able to see there is a start and an offset. Okay, start and an offset. Okay, if I adjust the start value, for example, from 0 to 100, can you see that? Okay, something like this. Okay, if I adjust the end value, it will be in the opposite direction. All right, something like this. Okay, and then if I adjust the offset, for example, I don't want my line to start at the top here. I want my line to start at this quarter area here. Okay, so what I can do is I can change the offset value to something like this. Let's say I put 90 degrees and now I animate the end, for example. So my line will be starting from here. Okay. Offset. Understand? Uh, Start. Sir. Yeah. Um, I have a question. What's yep. the difference between the offset and the rotation? Uh, because the, the first digit is the degree, right? Is it 
the, the no, no, first, no, no, no. Yeah. First one digit is the number of cycle. How many 360 degree? Okay, sometimes, huh, just, just for yeah. demo purpose. Okay, let's say sometimes I want to do something like this. Okay, and then I want to animate. Let's say I put zero first. Okay, and then I want to animate this. I want it to be spinning like this. You understand? Yep. Okay, so what I can do is I click the stopwatch here. Let's say zero first. I click the stopwatch. I go to my, let's say, last frame. I key in two. Two enter. Two means 720 degrees. Dua kali, tiga enam kosong. Yep, yep. Okay, so when I play back, when I go to preview panel, I play, it will circle one full circle, 300, and then the second okay. cycle, 360. So 720. You understand? So the, the, the first digit is the cycle number. Yep. And the the second, second is just the angle. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Great. No problem. Okay. So that is our offset. And then we're going to animate the start, huh? not the uh, offset at the moment. Okay. Default value for start, it will be uh, what called? Uh, it's uh, zero. Okay. And then end value will be 100. So we can choose whether you want to animate the start or the end. Okay, Samuel, uh, how to get the trim path? Okay, let me just delete the trim path now. Okay, open your shape layer here in the timeline. You click the arrow to expand the layer. Can you see there is a small arrow beside this box here, the label color? Click the arrow, you expand it, and then you will find content. Same row with the content, there is an add button here. Click the add arrow at the edge, and then you choose trim path. Is it clear? Okay, can you do that now? You choose trim path first, and then you expand so that you can see the start, end, and offset. Can you do that, everyone? Are you guys done? Okay, please get it done first. Apply the trim path. If unable to find, let me know, please. Okay, Chaima done. Samuel done. B done. Okay, Kartik done, Suraya done. Okay, shall we proceed? If you've got a problem, please let me know now, not later. Have you applied the trim path? Don't ask me later, huh, please. Any problem? Okay, we're going to proceed now. Okay, take a look here. We're going to animate the either start or end. Okay, to animate in After Effects, we need to click this uh, small stopwatch icon. Okay, this uh, stopwatch icon, it will enable the animation or the keyframe. All right, so for example, let's say at uh, time, can you see this time here? There is a number 00S, 01, 02, 03. Okay, and then you can see it, it has a S at the back. Okay, S means second. If I zoom in, for example, I click the plus button in my keyboard. Okay you press plus button in your keyboard, it will zoom in in your timeline. Okay, now I don't see my S anymore, but I see F. F represent frame. It's something like from centimeter, it shows millimeter. All right? F represent frame. Then if I zoom out, then I can see my S second. Okay, so and then there is a blue color button here with the straight line here, the blue color line as well. Okay, this is your playhead or current time indicator. All right. So for example, if I put at time at one second, can you see there is zero one? I move my time here. 
Okay, if it is difficult for you to move using your mouse, right, then you can type in the time from here. There is a zero, 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 right? Okay, you click that and then you type 100. 100 means one second, zero, zero frame. You enter. So it will jump to one second. So at one second, I want the value of N to be zero. No line, nothing is there. And then I click my stopwatch icon. When I click the stopwatch icon, right, what happened is it will enable the animation or the keyframe. So I will have a, my first keyframe here. When I click the stopwatch icon, after that, I change my time to two seconds, let's say. Or you can also type here 200. Okay, let's say I, I'm at the previous uh, frame somewhere. And then I type 200, enter. It will go to 200. And then I increase the value to whatever value that I want. Let's say something like this. And then when I move my time back to the first frame or the time 00, zero and then I click the, at the preview panel, I click the play button. Play or stop. So I have this. Stop. Go to first frame. Play again. Understand or not? Go to your one second. Master dia 100 ataupun 1 second, you change the value to 0, the N value. N value to 0, then you click the stopwatch. You will get a first keyframe. Then change your time to 2 second using your mouse or you change the value here, 200 for 2 second. Then you increase the value, click and drag okay, to whatever value. And then you go back to your first frame from the preview panel. There is first button is your first frame. Click the first frame and then click the play button. Can you try first? Okay, if done, please let me know. If you have a problem, let me know. I'll repeat again. Okay, jangan malu-malu nak tanya. Tolong tanya, malu tanya sesat jalan. Okay, siapa yang rugi? Bukan saya rugi. You juga yang rugi. Okay, how to make it faster? Alright, how to make it faster? You just move your keyframe. Okay, can you see the second keyframe, right? You move it closer to the first one. Just move it closer. Then you try to play again. Okay, Samuel, try first. Click and drag your keyframe so that it is close to each other. Okay, the rest, if you guys done, let me know. If you've got question, also please let me know. Jangan malu-malu. Anyone done? Kalau tak dapat, tanya ya. Tanya, tanya, tanya. Suraya, are you done? Kartik? Shahima, Nur Shahima, are you doing it? All right, all right. Okay, Shahima done. Okay, thank you. Okay, Kartik done. Okay, when I call your name only, you will type done, is it? Guys? Okay, please type, please guys, help me. Okay, thanks, message. Okay, thank you guys three. Thank you, Alicia. Some more, some more, some more. Uh, where are the rest? Okay, Suraya, all right. Uh, sir, I have problem. Yeah, yeah. Um, sure. I just started to open the apps and then I tried to draw the ellipse, but I cannot find it. Uh, it appears as rectangle. Yeah, you click and hold the rectangle too. Click and hold the right angle too. Okay, thank you, sir. Already. All right. Okay. Okay. Please uh, take a look at my screen. Okay. Please take a look at my screen now. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna repeat one more time. Okay. One last time. Okay. By default, when we apply the trim path, right? We go to shape layer. 
and then we click the ad at the same row with the content there is an ad here click and then we choose trim part and then we will be able to see there is a trim part and we, when i click the arrow at the trim part i can see there is a start and an offset all right so what i do i want to animate either one either start or end doesn't matter okay only the difference is the direction of how the circle is going to appear all right so let's say for example i want to animate from one second until two second okay so that's why i go to one second first okay at one second we do not want to see any of this stroke okay so what i do is let's say for example i increase the start to zero so uh, sorry 100 when i increase the start to 100 i don't see my line anymore okay there is a the curve here is just a selection not the actual line if i deselect you see when i deselect there is nothing when i select again the layer then i can see this blue line but this is not the stroke okay so i already changed my start to 100 and then at one second i click the stopwatch for start and then i change my time to two seconds i reduce the value to maybe about uh, something like this okay about 16 over here so when i play back i go back to the front here to the first frame and then i click the play button from the preview panel so i get this in the opposite direction all right and then when i'm playing right it will be playing until 10 seconds then only, then only it will repeat again if let's say i just want to play up to three seconds okay can you see there is a work area over here work area n can you see there is a blue color a bar kind of thing work area and when you put your mouse over right stop animation okay you put your mouse over here it says work area and you click and drag until three seconds so now when i preview it will preview up to three seconds only then you repeat again so that i don't have to wait until 10 seconds to view my animation okay to make it faster or slower we just adjust the timing okay faster means we reach a, a, a place let's say uh, from kl to Sramban, let's say okay normally we 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 reach there at uh, maybe let's say uh, one and a half hour let's say lah, or one hour let's say okay one hour from kl to Sramban is one hour if i want to go faster okay if i go faster right what happen is i will reach earlier the duration will reduce right same thing here if we want to make the animation faster we need to reduce the time okay the time difference okay either start time or the end time which is the keyframe in our case so we move the keyframe nearer click and drag click and drag okay very close to each other so now when i play right let's say i go to first frame and then click the play button can you see that very fast okay if you want to slow down you increase the duration duration means the distance between the keyframe the start time and also the end time okay when you increase it will be going slow all right clear changing the speed okay this diamond shape thingy right we call it as keyframe this is keyframe this is keyframe okay faham faham tak semua Andy, did you manage to do it? Andy? Uh, I lost. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure how to um, color the line. Okay, look at here, look at here. After yeah. you draw the shape, yeah. okay, you go to here, on top here. Can you see my cursor? Uh, I can see, but there's no um, fill stroke. 
but click there this. is yeah. Click the ellipse tool. Yeah. Okay, double click. Okay, sorry. Not double click, huh? not double click. But then if I didn't double click, uh, it doesn't. Just click appear. one time. Undo back. Control Z. If you double click, right, you will create another circle ellipse. Don't double click. Okay, okay click one time only. All right. Undo first okay. and then click one time, the ellipse tool. Then you can see the fill option. Can you see my cursor? Mm, yes. Where, where, where am I placing my cursor? The fill option. Yeah. Click at the fill option, choose none. Click OK. Mm. And then you go to stroke option. Oh, um, you bring the cursor to the word. Stroke. Yep. Uh, to the okay. word, yes, yep. exactly, to the word not on the box. Okay, stroke option, solid color. Okay, solid color is the second box here, solid color. Then click sir, okay. So can I share my screen? Because yeah, better. I can, yes. I can, uh, yes. Okay. Um, I click one time. Mm, but nothing right. happened. But if I click double, okay, can you share only your After Effects screen? Effects screen. Stop sharing. Stop sharing. Hold on. Uh, uh, how to stop? Ah, uh, here. Okay. Stop and then share screen and then choose your After Effects screen only. After Effects. Share. Done. Okay, I'm looking at your screen now. Okay. Yeah. Don't double uh, click. As I told you, don't double yeah, click. Yeah. Undo first. Control Z. Control Z. Control okay. Z. Control Z. Control Z. Some more. Control Z. Some more. Nothing happening. Okay, never mind. You click the shape layer one at the timeline. At the timeline. At the uh -huh. time and then press delete in your keyboard. Shape uh -huh. layer one. At the bottom timeline. Yeah. Here. Okay. Yeah. Click shape layer one, not mask uh, one. Uh, this one, okay. Shape layer one. Can you see the name? Oh, okay. Shape layer okay. one. Ah, uh, yep. click yep. that. Click. Click. And then delete in your keyboard. Delete. Mm. Go to your ellipse tool. Okay. And then click and drag while holding the shift key. Click and drag while holding. Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. And then go to fill option. Yep. None. Uh, none. Okay, stroke option, stroke option. Okay, solid color. Okay, fine. Click OK. Okay. And then white color, let's say leave it as white. And then can you see there is a two pixel there? Beside the white color. Oh, sorry. Where is white. your white color? White color is... Ah, beside that, beside that. Number two. Number two. Click and drag. Click number two. Click and drag. Hold your mouse and then drag. Number two, at the number two, we need to change the value. Uh, click and drag. Oh, oh, okay. Left and right. Uh, yes. Okay. Some more, some more. Yeah, something like that. Yep. Okay. Yep. Cool. Thank you, thank you. And then go to your trim path. Go do it now. Do it now. <laughs> at your at your timeline there. Yes. Click the add yep. button there. Content. Can can you see the content there? Why container? Bawa shape layer one. Uh, shape layer one. Bawa dia. Content. Content. Ah, okay, okay. Yep. Ah, content. Same row with the content on the towards the right hand side. Right. Trim kanan. Okay. Here. At ah, the... yes. Choose trim part. Bawa, bawa. Choose trim part. Trim part. Okay. Yep. And then expand the trim part. Expand. Yep. Can you see start, end, and offset? Yep. Okay, you change your time to one second. One second. Um, yeah, I right click here. 100. Yes, click that. Click. Click, click saja. Type 100. 100. Enter. Enter. Okay, now your time is one second. Change the end value to zero. End value to zero. Yep. Okay, enter. Then change your time to two seconds. Time. Time or I... Oh, yeah, you yeah. can use your mouse or you can type there, yes, either one. 
right yep. right here 10. yep 10 and then click and drag the end value the zero zero now right yep zero click and drag the blue color number yes here yes click and drag yep okay. yep and then try to play back oh sorry sorry so, so sorry yep. Yep. undo yep. back control z control z go to one second one second oh one second we, we forgot to click the stopwatch mm. okay. mm -hmm. click the stopwatch at the end not start end and stopwatch mm -hmm. can you see the stopwatch icon small stopwatch icon yeah yeah click that what happened is we just added a keyframe okay now change the time to two seconds can you hear me i i can hear but how to minimize this <laughs> i the window is it to minimize the this. Zoom. yep yep uh, you have to move it how you have to move it up maybe uh, i move it up okay okay two seconds no no the time 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 not that one that one zero okay yeah master two seconds two second. yes change the value increase the value increase the value here yep uh, uh let's say okay yeah something okay. like that now go to preview panel uh preview is up here right down down a bit down a bit oh here here okay click okay go to first frame first frame the first button the first button this one hi first mean the one on the left hand side on the left in the preview panel in the preview there is a how many buttons do you have there the play button ah the oh, previous the frame, first frame. Ah, okay, the first okay. button first frame okay click and then click the play button now play button mm. can you see that okay. <laughs> thank you sir okay okay all right to stop here thank you okay no problem Okay, so when you are animating, right, it's very important for you to understand the keyframe. Okay, so if you look at my screen here, okay, so when I play back this, right, I click the play button. Okay, why we need to, if your time is here, right, if you click the play button, it will go to the next. It will not play back the beginning. So that's why you need to click the first frame, then play. Okay, now my animation is very slow. Okay, to increase the speed, you reduce the space between the two keyframes. And then you try to play again. Now faster a bit. You want some more faster, you move some more closer. And then play again. Okay. Okay, so this is your keyframe. All right. So now we we if we want to control the exact value with another tool okay so for example we want there is a number in the middle here okay so to add a number we go to type tool first okay how to go to type tool can you see on top here there is a uh, ellipse tool and then there is a pen tool okay you can use pen tool also to draw lines or any other shape all right and then you go to T, horizontal type tool. Okay, I'm going to click at the horizontal type tool. And then I'm going to bring my cursor here in my composition. And then I just click. Okay, when I click, right, there is a red color cursor here. And then I just simply put uh, 99 or 88. Okay, my text is in a very dark blue color. Okay, so what I do, I click after I type something, I go to click the selection tool. I will see a bounding box here. Okay, and then I change my setting from here, the character panel, the font type, okay, the font family, the font type, and then the color as well. Color, let's say I'm going to put white color. Okay, and then the size, the font size, I can increase it from here as well. Okay, and to change the position, right? you try to practice changing the value from your timeline 
Go to your timeline. There is a 99 text. Go to transform the position. Click and drag the X value down. Click and drag the Y value. Something like this. Okay, to position it in the middle of the circle. Something like this. And then maybe not so big. I reduce the size a bit. And then move it up a bit. Okay, you click and drag the value. To change the value, you hold your cursor and then click and drag. Okay, something like this. Can you try to do this? Do you need me to repeat? Yes, no? Yes. All right, okay, let me just uh, repeat one more time. I'm going to delete my layer here. Okay, we're going to put uh, a number animated together with this circle. All right. <clears throat> So first thing, I go to this type tool, horizontal type tool. Okay, and then I bring my cursor to the middle of here, and then I just click. Okay, when I click, I can see the, there is a cursor here, and then I just type 88, for example. Okay, or maybe three digit lah. Let's say I want maximum is 100, right? So let's say I type 888. Okay, something like this. And then to change the formatting, okay, easier if you just click the selection tool. After you type, you go to selection tool, then you go to your character panel, change the font. Let's say, for example, I want it to be a very thin font, let's say. Okay, so I can choose uh, Arial, Arial um, Regular, for example. Okay, Arial Regular, and then change the color. Okay, fill color, click to change. Click that, and then let's say I want to put cyan color as well and then change the color here, and then click OK. After that, change the position. To change position, you go to your timeline layer, you expand the layer, expand the transform, change the position. Click and drag, click and drag. Okay, something like this. Can you do it? Okay, can you try first? If still got problem, let me know. So, yes, Samuel. So you say now we want to use the same color as the circle. Is there an eyedropper? You say what? Eyedropper. There, in the character panel, can you see the eyedropper? Okay, sir. Yeah, choose that. Can. <clears throat> okay, if done, please let me know. Okay, Rahana done. Okay, Samuel done. Artic done. I three done. Okay, Alicia done. All right. Okay, before I proceed, right, another question. Anyone here already familiar with the last uh, After Effects? Anyone already familiar? Can you just please type in the chat? Uh, Alicia, are you familiar with uh, After Effects? Yes. Oh, okay, very good. Okay, Gayatri, yes. Okay, thank you. Some more? You know why I'm asking this question? So that I don't just simply cover the basic part. Okay, maybe I can show a bit of advanced stuff. Oh, first time, Chaima, all right. Okay, are you guys done with the text? Okay, cool. Okay, now, now what we're going to do is, okay, we're going to animate this number, number one. And number two, we want to use a controller to control the number and also the percentage of this this circle okay 
for example, let's say if I get the number, the number from zero, it increased to, let's say, 45, for example. Okay, 45 percentage. And then the number also changed to 45. All right. And then the angle here, okay, the, for example, the start, right? Okay, if I go to this thing, okay, it should be something like this. All right, so we're going to do that with another external controller. Okay, so how to do that? Okay, currently I just we just simply uh, type a number here. Okay, if you want to adjust to control this number with another value, so what you can do is if you expand the text, right? There is a source text. Okay, there is a source text. For example, okay, this one I I animated the start. Uh, for example, let's say. Um, Let's say I put a negative value. Nope. Okay, I should be animating the end actually. Okay, let me. I just put a zero here first. Okay, now I have my full circle. I remove my keyframe. If you click again the stopwatch, right, it will remove the keyframe. Okay, so now what I do, this source text. Okay, can you see there is a spiral icon here? This is for you to parent and link between attributes okay so here it says a uh, property uh, pick width okay so what i can do is the source text i want it to be same as the end for example i just click and drag drop it to the end okay anytime i change the end value okay the number also will be animated can you see that Understand or not? I repeat one more time. Take a look. I expand my text here, expand it, and then I can see there is a source text. And then after that, what I do, I, I remove the keyframe for my trim part. The animation that we did earlier, I remove it. Okay, how to remove? You click again the stopwatch for start and either start or end. When you click, it will become white color. If you click one time, if you have a keyframe, it will be in blue color. So I want you to change it to white color first, means you remove the keyframe. And then change back to default value, 0, 100. That is the default value. After that, you use the property pick whip. The source text, there is a spiral icon here. You click and drag. Click and drag, 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 drop it on the end value. Okay, the, the word end, right? You drop it there. So what will happen is, next time when we change this end value, the text also will be animated. The source text, it will follow this number. All right? Understand or not so far? Sir, I have a question. Yeah. Is it the spiral icon only applicable for numbers or how? Any attribute, any text. So let's say I, I put um, text T E X T. So if I drag spiral, what happened? Uh? It, it will replace with the number. Can you try? Uh? I okay. okay, for example, uh, I undo that. Okay, I have uh, this, uh, let me see. Okay, I have a triple eight, right? Okay, this one I put text T E X T, right? Is this your question? Yep, 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 correct. Okay, I have a text, but source text, what I do, I use the pick wave and then I drop it at the end. It will replace with the number. The text no more applicable. Okay? You understand? I still not clear on the function of the spiral. Mm. Okay, means, yep. okay, means, for example, Mm -hmm. Let me stop my background. Let me stop sharing. Okay, can you see my face? Okay, right. Let me remove my background. None. Okay, you see, for example, I have a phone. All right? Yep. And I put my pen here. So yep. whenever I move my phone, right, I'm also moving my pen. Correct. I'm not yep. holding the pen, you know. Yep. 
Okay, so means the position of the pen is now being controlled by the phone. Okay, yep. Okay, something like that. So same thing, the source text now controlled by the, the end value of different layer. Okay. But why does the text word disappear? Because you typed it. Same like how I typed triple eight. Uh, what version are you using, by the way? Um, hold on. After Effects, CS6, girl? Uh, I'm not sure. I download via the link that you give. Uh, how, how to know, sir? Oh, 2022. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, uh, Adobe After Effects 2022. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay, all right. Okay, so that one is just a default text. When you click, it will have a default text. That's all. You understand? Understand or not? Sorry, sir. <laughs> I, I don't think so. I understand. <laughs> but... um. Okay, okay. Now, yeah. now. Sometimes, right, okay, in school, I still remember a word uh, told by my teacher. Yep. Okay, you don't have to understand this now, just yep. follow. Yes, yes, I follow. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yep. Okay, so if you don't understand, right, no worries. You just follow. You do that two or three times, you will understand on your own. Yep, yep. Okay. Yep. All right, you, you just do it. Just do it. All right. Okay, so if, for example, this text, you can type anything. For example, I can put a, a title here. Okay, uh, whatever title lah. Uh, okay, sales. So whatever. Oops, sorry. Okay, I have a sales. Okay, and then I can animate this. Okay, I animate from zero. Eh, okay, but instead of sales, I don't want to put sales there. Okay, after that, I, I think, think, think. Okay, sales, maybe I can put down. But in the middle, I want to put number growing from... Oops, sorry, I forgot to share my screen. Am I sharing or not? Yes, I can see sales. Oh, okay, okay, all right, all right. Okay, so instead of sales, I want to put the number increasing from zero to whatever percentage value. So what I do, I don't want the source text to be sales, but I want the source text to follow this attribute value. Okay, I want it to be 75, let's say. So I just use the pick whip, drop it on here, the end. So whatever value here, it will follow. Now you can see it is 75, right? So it will follow 75. Now when I play, nothing will happen because I didn't animate the end value. If I animate, for example, I start with zero. I click the stopwatch. I move my time and then I increase the value. So now when I play back, it will increase the number and also the, the shape. But the decimal point you can ignore for now. You understand? The text is controlled by another attribute. That's all. Okay. Can you all do this first? If done, please let me know. Okay, never mind. Just follow, just follow, just do it. If you don't understand, it's okay. Okay, only for this part. Huh? Just get it done first. Okay, I want you to use the pick wave drag and drop from the source text to the end value. Okay, if animated or not animated, it's fine. If you need me to repeat, please let me know. Uh, okay, okay, please, please take a look here. Samuel, Samuel, please take a look at my screen. Please take a look at my screen. Do you understand? 
Okay, don't do it together with me. All right, please take a look at my screen. All right, so first thing, I remove my animation first. How to remove? You click at the stopwatch at this trim part so that there is no more blue color stopwatch. And then you change back to your default value. Let's say zero and 100, enter. Okay, zero start and 100. After that, okay, this part clear or not? Remove keyframe, change the value to default value again. Understand or not? All right, next thing, at the text here, you'll find text and transform. Expand the text, you'll see source text. Okay, at the source text, you will see, you'll find a, a pick whip. Same row, make sure it is the same row one, not a different row. Okay, same row with the source text. Click and drag the pick whip, drop it on the end, and let go your mouse. All right? Then this number, right, the text, it will change to a number according to whatever number which is here. If I change now, it will follow. Change the end value. The text will follow. You try first now. If anyone done, please let me know. Uh, no, Shahima, is it animated or not animated? Animated mean is it moving or not moving? Moving. Moving. You have a keyframe, is it? Yes, sir. Okay, all right, all right, cool. Uh, sir, why my one got many decimal places? Yeah, it's okay. Mine also same. Oh, okay. All right. When you, when you move your, your timeline here, right? Okay, it will, not, it will not show you the decimal point. But when you click the play button, it will show you the decimal points, right? Yes, no? Yep, yep, yes, yes. Okay, let's say for example, I play this, right? So oh, still move also got, okay, never mind. Okay, who else done? And who else got a problem? Okay, Gayatri done, Samuel done, Shaima done, Andy done, Samo? Samo, who else? Rohana? Ramesh? Shalihin? Mohammad Shalihin? Nora Alicia, are you done? Are you guys done? Okay, Alicia done, message done, Suraya done, Kartik done. Okay, all right, great. Okay, now we need to change these uh, decimal numbers here, right, into a round number, right? Okay, so what you do, you go to your source text, and then there is an arrow there. Now, previously no arrow, now got arrow. You click the arrow, you'll find expression source text. Can you see that? Can you see this? Yeah. Okay, now you click on this expression. Okay, when you click, there will be a cursor there. You go to the front of the front of the expression and then you type M A M capital letter, is it? Let me see here. M A T H. Okay, math dot round, M-A-T-H, round. And then open and close bracket. Uh, let me see, no, no, sorry. Open bracket and then at the end of the expression, you close bracket. Understand or not? Here, M-A-T-H dot round, open bracket. And then at the end, close bracket and then click play button.
Can you try? Try first. If you need me to repeat, please let me know. Uh, uh, Rohana, you better you type. Rohana, you better type. Because why? If you copy paste, right? Okay, mine maybe not uh, shape layer one. Yours maybe not shape layer one. Okay, maybe not trim path one. So it might be get error. So instead, you just need sikit saja. Math dot round. Okay, I copy yang ni lah. Okay, yang ni kan. Math dot round. And then buka kurungan. And then tutup kurungan dekat hujung sekali. Uh, okay, no need, no need. For now, no need to animate. SH. Okay, for now, no need to animate. Let's say I also remove lah. Huh? I also remove my keyframe. Okay, no animation. 0, 100. Okay, 0, 100. Now what you do? You expand the source text. Okay, click the arrow at the source text. You'll find this expression. You click the expression. You add this. M at the beginning, math dot round, and then open bracket. And then at the ending here, close bracket. Okay, you do that first. So yes. if I want to put percentage, so I put math percentage or what? No, 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 no. That one later, 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 later. Yeah, Shortly. Yeah. Shortly. 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 yeah. Okay, mine is not animated. Just remove this. Okay, are you guys done? The math uh, dot round open bracket and then this com dot layer shape layer one content trim path and and then at the end of the expression close the bracket. All okay? It's not working when I type the m when I. Put it cap lock and type M is really the rest all lost. So. Uh, did I put caps lock here? No, sir. I only click one uh, caps lock and then I close back. The thing all lost. Can you share your screen? Yes, sir. <laughs> Where? Where's yeah, yeah. your expression? Okay, click the arrow, click the arrow now. Source text arrow. Okay. What do you have done? <laughs> what do you have done? Okay, remove the expression now. <clears throat> to remove the expression, you alternate and click at the stopwatch of the source text. Go to source text, stopwatch, right? Alternate and click. Okay, you already removed now. Again, you use the pick whip, drop it to the end. Yeah. Okay, now click the arrow at the source text. Click the expression. This com dot layer. This com dot layer. Ah, click. Go to the first. Put your cursor to the beginning at the beginning. Okay, math. Okay. Okay. Open. Okay. The close remove. Open only, yeah? No close. Okay. Automatically, it has open and close there, right? Okay. The close one remove. Yes. Now go to the end. Close it. Yep. That's it. Hmm? Okay. Try to change the end value now. At the bottom. At the bottom. End. The trim path. End. Uh, click and drag. Okay. All right, it's working fine. Why is it uh, not in the middle? Because you didn't put it in the middle. But then, uh, it's hundred is in the middle. 
Oh, 100 is in the middle. Okay, you go to your uh, what we call a character panel. You go to paragraph, sorry. Select the text layer. You go to paragraph. Paragraph panel. Can you see the paragraph panel? Ah, below that. Somewhere down. Paragraph, yes. Center align. Okay, then you move it. Position. Change the position now. No, no, the text. The text transform. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Play now. Uh, I mean, change the value now. The end value. Okay. All right. Shahima can. Shahima, the part. Shahima, Shahima. Okay, all right. Okay, let me share my screen. Okay, last thing what we're going to do is, okay, we want to uh, control the animation using another effect. Okay, for example, okay, let's say maybe we have a uh, different different uh, objects. Now we only have one object. Okay, if you have one object, then you can directly animate the end. Put a keyframe and then change time. Put another keyframe. You can animate, but if you have few objects, right? You can use one controller and then a few uh, slider controller. Okay, for example, let's say I create a new adjustment layer. Okay, I go to composition. I'm uh, sorry, I go to a uh, layer, new adjustment layer. Okay, this adjustment layer's purpose is for me to put a controller. Okay, I want you to create an adjustment layer now. Can you do that? Layer, new adjustment layer, or control alternate Y. Can you do that? Okay, click now. Layer, new adjustment layer. So I'm going to click now. So you will have this adjustment layer. I'm going to put the adjustment layer at the bottom, at the top, sorry. And then I'm going to rename this. I right click and then I choose rename. Or you can press enter also. Select and then you press enter. It will go to rename. And then you type controller. Okay, something like this. So that you can easily identify in future. Okay, this is my controller. All right. So now, okay, it's up to you lah, whether you want to rename or not. Okay, now what I do, I go to effects and preset. I go to effects and preset. And then I search for slider. Okay, I go to slider. And then what I do, I apply this slider control to my adjustment layer. Okay, you drag this slider control. You drop it on the adjustment layer like that. Okay, and you will be able to see the slider control over here in the effect control panel. Okay, one more time I repeat. After you adjust, uh, created the adjustment layer, you rename it. Then you go to effects and preset. If you don't have effects and preset, you go to window, you find for effects and preset. Then you search for slider, S-L-I-D-E-R. And then you apply the slider control, you click and drag, drop it on the adjustment layer. Once you drop it, right, you will be able to see slider control on the effect control panel. This is effect control panel. This is effects and preset panel. Okay, effects control panel, you can adjust the effects value, any effects. Is it clear so far? And can you do it? If done, please let me know. Okay, Samuel done. Okay, Nechudin done. Moon done. Alicia done. Kaitri done. Yes, yeah, sir. What happened if I not drag the slider control, but I, I double click it? Boleh, boleh, boleh. Can. Okay. Boleh. 
okay to apply any effect right you select the layer and you double click the effect also can no problem okay all right okay i assume all done lah. okay take a look here now i'm going to use this slider control to control the end value okay this end value right okay i don't animate this huh? in case if you have animated remove the keyframe now okay if you have a keyframe you click the stopwatch to remove the keyframe now and then what you do at the end here right at the end here there is a pick whip make sure you select the controller first and then you choose the end property pick whip drop it on the slider on top here can you see my cursor where is it now i'm bringing it to the effect control panel or okay and then i let go or what you can do is i undo back you expand the controller and then you expand the effect there is a slider controller okay bigger a bit okay can you see there is a slider here you bring from the end here and then drop it on the slider from end to the slider now after that you just have to animate the slider value okay means i don't have to open any other layer from here i can know that my controller is this layer select the layer and then i adjust the the slider value and i can animate this because there is a stopwatch there faham faham tak expand the controller expand the effect there is a slider control expand nampak slider then from the end remove the keyframe first drag and drop using the pick whip the end drop it on the slider okay if done let me know tak faham tolong tanya tak dapat tolong tanya tolong bagi tahu anyone Ah uh, yes, guys, sure. Okay, let me just remove my slider control. Okay, first of all, uh, there is an error. Okay, first of all, I have an adjustment layer. Okay, and then I take this uh, uh, effects and preset. I go to search for slider, drop the slider control on the adjustment layer, and then I expand this both layer, the shape layer one, the trim path, so that I can see my end and also the the adjustment layer expand the effect expand the slider control i can see the slider now okay from the end use the pick whip drop it on the slider like this that's it can you do that Kaitri? then you let go your mouse from end drop it to the slider okay after that you just animate your slider okay means let's say i go to two second or maybe one second the value is zero click the stopwatch change the time and then increase the, the value to whatever value that you want and then you can just go to preview and then you play got it And the number zero, right? At the beginning, we don't want to see the number zero. Okay, we want the zero to appear once the animation starts. Okay, so you put your time at where your animation starts, the first keyframe, and then you trim your text. You click and drag from the beginning. When you when you bring your cursor to the first part of this here, right? They see a black arrow pointing left and right. You click and drag to trim it. So when I play at the beginning, I don't see anything. Then straight away, the number starts to increase together with the shape. Understand? 
Can you see my text here? Okay, click and drag. Uh, sir, my mm. the shape no. already disappear. <laughs> Only number appear. How? Oh. Can you share I your screen? Sure. Can you see my screen? Can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay, can. Okay, stop. Okay, you buat dia terbalik eh. Bukan dari slider to the end. Dari end to the slider. Oh, so how to remove, sir? Control Z. Oh, okay. One more. Lagi? Lagi? Okay, dah. Ah, banyak sangat ni. One by one lah. Eh. Okay, redo balik. Control shift Z. Control shift Z. Yep. Okay, now the end, the trim path end kan. You remove okay. the keyframe. Click the blue color stopwatch. Okay. Okay, yep. drag from the end to the slider. Slider, slider control tu click arrow dia. Slider control, okay. go to slider, slider. control okay, okay. first, yep. Ah, yep. click the arrow. Yep. Okay, from end, drag it, drop to the slider. I bring the spiral mm. yep. to the slider. Mm. Yep. Okay, oh, now you go to two second. Two second. No, atas dia. Yeah. Yang atas, yang ada line tu. No, 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 not that, yeah, not yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah. yang bawah tu tarik balik. Yes, tarik lagi. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. At two second nak berapa value dia? Adjust the slider sahaja. After this, you just slider. animate using the slider. Okay, sir. Can see already. Thank you. Okay, yeah. now click yeah. the stopwatch. Click, click the, the stopwatch stop okay, for slider. Yeah. Slider. I told you slider. after yeah. this, animate using the slider only. Mm, yep. Okay. Jangan usik text. Jangan usik shape layer one anymore. Only controller. Yep. All right. Okay. Go to your first frame. Change the value. To animate, you need to have two keyframe. Now, baru ada satu keyframe. Right. Yes. Stop. Stop playback. Stop. Stop playback. Move to one one second. Go to one second. Change your time. Change master. Yes. Okay. No, no. Everything must be hundred. Not one hundred zero one. No. Select all and then click again. One hundred. Enter. Change the value to zero. This one. Yep. Correct. Correct. Zero. Eh? You type zero. Zero. Okay. And then play. Now play. Okay. Dekat depan, we don't want to see the zero, right? So you trim the text. Stop. Stop playback. Bring your cursor to the red color layer there, the text layer. Okay, dekat, dekat, dekat dia punya masa zero, zero tu. Masa zero mana? No, macam yeah. yang ruler tu, dia punya timeline tu. Ada nampak macam ruler tak? Zero, one, two, uh, four, six, eight, ah uh, tu. Masa okay. zero kat mana? Zero, yeah. Ah, turun bawah, cursor turun bawah ke merah. Yes. yes. Ada nampak dua arrow hitam? Uh, yes. Click and drag. Nampak. Yes, you click and drag now. To the mm -hmm. first keyframe. Ah, yeah, betul. Yes, correct. Try to play now. Faham? No, not understand. What I'm doing, sir? Okay, at the beginning, we don't want to see the number. Kita tak nak tengok kosong saja kan? Betul tak? Okay, you try to undo balik and then you try to play. Mungkin you akan faham. Control Z now. Stop. Stop playback. Control Z. Play. Play. 
Tengok 10 kali bagi faham dulu. Kenapa dia tiba-tiba ada kosong sekejap? Faham tak? Before there is a shape, there is a number zero there. We don't want that. Tak faham tak? But still got the value zero here. <laughs> okay, anybody faham tak? Nur Syahimah yeah. faham tak? What I'm trying to say here. Syahimah ada tak? Faham tak, Syahima? Faham, faham. Sikit-sikit lah. Sikit-sikit. So, I mean, uh, why do we trim the zero there? The 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 text. Yang ini. Why why we do we trim here, up to here? This one. Why? Tahu tak kenapa? Syahima? Uh, so dia akan mula dari pada first dia akan keluar untuk uh, apa tu okey you see our animation is kita ada shape kita ada number keluar kan alright but dekat depan ni tak ada shape tapi dia ada nombor kosong alright we don't want to see this number at the beginning but we want to see the shape together with the number You understand? Okay, I want to see the shape and also the number at the same time. So, what I do, I trim the, I remove the front part of the text. The front part of this number. So, means when I play, the pan tak nampak. So, they can appear together. The shape and the number, it will appear together. Not only the number first, then only the shape and number animated. Alright, but if you like to put the number first, it's okay, can, no problem. If you want to view the number zero at the beginning, can, no issues. Alright, okay, now, now we will take a short break and then come back, we will uh, use an uh, illustrator file to animate, okay? Uh, anyone got any question or not before we go for a short break? Anyone got any question on this? Yeah. Guys? No question. Okay, all right. We go for a short break. We come back at... Uh... Uh, yes, Samuel, I, I will share it to you shortly before the... Uh... Uh, break ends okay i will show, uh, share a file with you guys all right so we come back at uh, 10 what time 1005 okay okay not okay all right see you guys shortly bye Are you guys back? <clears throat> I guess in already. Yes. Okay. okay. I'm putting a link in the chat box. Okay, please uh, download the file. Anyone here familiar with the Illustrator? Anyone familiar with Illustrator? Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Photoshop? A bit. Okay, so basically, when you create a file in 
<coughs> Photoshop or Illustrator, and then you put it in a different layer. Okay, Photoshop it has layers, right? Okay, same goes to Illustrator. When you put it in uh, in layers, okay, then when you import in After Effects, you can get back all the layers. Okay, and you can animate all the layers separately in After Effects. All right, so please uh, download the file. Have you guys downloaded? Yes. All right, so I already opened my file in Illustrator. Huh? So you don't have to open in Illustrator. I'm just showing you the layers. All right, so normally when we design, it will be in one layer. Okay, something like this. This is in, in, in Illustrator, uh, Illustrator, okay? It will be in one layer. So what you have to do is any element that you want to animate in After Effects, then you have to make it as a different layer. So for example, what I've done is I put all this in a different layer. For example, this will be my first object, second object, third object, and fourth, and so on, okay? Something like this. So of course, if you want to animate the box separately, the icon separately, the text separately, you put it in a different layer, all right? So this one, just a simple one. I'm gonna show you how to animate this. Okay, let's say for example, okay, uh, we're going to import this file in After Effects. Okay, so let me share my After Effects. <clears throat> okay, this file, you can, you can just uh, close it first, okay? And you can save and keep the file. Okay, maybe in future class, we're going to use it back. We're going to overlay with on top of another video. All right, so keep the file first. And then you go to file, close project. Save the file and then close the project. Save it somewhere in, uh, let's say I put desktop and then I create a new folder. Uh, let's say I put a Yavinesh after effects uh, uh, data visualization. Okay, something like this. And then let's say I put circle. Okay, the file name, I save it as circle in my desktop, a folder name. All right, and then save it. And then close the project. Then you're going to import the file. Okay, can you close the file first? Close the project, file, close project, save the file. If done, let me know. Save, go to file, save. Search. After save, and then you go to file, close project. Send the link again. Click the link and then download. Done. Have you downloaded? Have you closed the project? Ah, okay, all right, noted, Shaima. Okay, so now, now what we do, we go to file, okay, and then I go to import, and then choose file. Okay, and then I browse my file. Let's say I put it in my Dropbox. Uh, okay, whenever you have a AI file or a PSD file, right? Okay, so for example, when I select an AI file, Illustrator file, the import as it has more option. 
Okay, if I choose any video or an image, I will not get this option. I will only get a footage. Okay, so when you choose an AI file, you choose composition, retain layer sizes. Okay, click on the AI file and then you choose import as composition, retain layer sizes. All right, then click import. Okay, what will happen here? It will import as a composition. This is my composition icon with the file name. And then in the folder, you'll see all your layers. All right, in the folder, you can see all your layers and also there is a composition. Okay, and then I can just double click the composition to open the composition here. Okay, and then I change to fit. I can see my object over here. Can you do that? Cannot open Dropbox. Uh, why? No, you just click the download uh, the link and then you choose download. Okay, let me share my screen now. Huh? Let me share my screen. If I go to my, uh, click the link. Where's my, okay. Can you see my screen? Okay, I click the link and then it will open up this page. Okay, you go to download. Okay, click the download button. Can you do that, Rohana? All right. <clears throat> okay, you go to import, you go to After Effects. Okay, sorry, stop sharing. You go to After Effects and then you go to Import, File, Import. Okay, let me delete first. Huh? I delete first, I go to File, Import, File. And then I select my Illustrator file and then Import as Composition, Retain Layer Sizes. Then you click Import. Okay, and then double click the composition. Just double click. It will load it into your timeline and also your composition panel. Can or not? Uh, from composition, is it the letter layer side or composition? What's that? Can't hear you. Shaima, one more time. Uh, okay. I don't know, I don't know. Okay, all right, all right. Okay, now double click the composition, not the folder, atas folder to is one file. Okay, that is your composition. Double click the composition. The composition size will be according to your Illustrator file size. You can see the information here. The resolution 1080 by 1080. Boleh tak semua Copy. Okay, all right. Now, now please take a look at my screen. So long thing not screen. Okay, here, for example, in your timeline, you can see all your layers. All right. If I turn off the visibility, I can see the, the layers, the object. Okay, let's say we want to start to animate the layer six, for example, I turn off the visibility of all these eyes here. Okay, left with layer six, the bottom layer, open the eyes here. And then I go to expand the arrow, expand the transform. 
Okay, and then I have anchor point, position, scale, rotation, opacity. <clears throat> Let's say we want to animate the position as though the object is dropping from the top to bottom. Okay, now currently the position is correct. Okay, the position is correct. So what I do, I change my time to let's say about uh, one second. Okay, I change my time to one second or I can type 100 over here, 100, oh sorry, 100, enter. So now my current time is one second. I click the stopwatch for position. Then I go back to first frame. First frame means the time 000. zero, zero. All right. And then I just move it up. How to move up? You click and drag the second value, the Y value. Click and drag until you don't see the object in your composition area. So when I play, it will be animated from outside of screen and then it will enter the screen. Something like this. Understand or not? Go to one second, click the stopwatch for position. Go to first frame, move it up. Can you do that? Can you do that? Okay, try first. Any problem, please let me know. If done, let me know. Done, tapi kenapa dia ada lagi box yang kat bawah? Yang kat bawah mana? Tolong share your screen. Kan yang... Please share your screen. Okay. Okay, can you play this? Go to preview panel and then play. Okay, total, total, correct. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, mine, I just close the visibility. Ada nampak mata tak? Simbol mata dekat layer. Hujung sebelah kiri. Uh, I tutup mata yang atas. Yang atas semua, just click, click and drag. Mata dia, mata dia. No, bawah, bawah sikit, bawah sikit, bawah sikit. Ah, uh, yes. Yep. Yang bawah sekali tu, buka lah. Yang bawah sekali buka. Layer tujuh tu. Ah, uh, tu. Okay. Uh, why my timeline not showing seconds? Because you have to zoom out. Press minus in your keyboard. SH. Press minus. Plus minus dekat keyboard. Ada nampak tak? Can you see that? There is a plus and minus in your keyboard. Press the minus to zoom out. If still cannot, share your screen. Uh, Samuel, can you share your entire screen? Samuel, can you share your screen, entire screen? Uh -huh. Go to import. Okay. I said composition retain layer sizes. So many times I repeated. Cancel, cancel, cancel. File, import. That's why you never look at my screen, right, Samuel? Right, go to file, import file. Okay, Just click on the infographics. Okay, and then at the bottom there, import S. Import S. No, import S. Read, read where you can find import S. Ah, footage. Change the footage to composition retain layer sizes. Yes, then click import. And then double click the composition. Yes, double click. Yep. Okay, and then turn off the visibility, all the top layer. Leave the last one only. The bottom one, leave it. Expand the layer, go to transform. And the transform position, go to time one second. 
time one second time time yes one second okay click the stopwatch go to first frame first frame means time zero yes then move it up the x value the second value of the position yes click and drag up up the other way yes up up until you don't see okay done then play okay something like that yes all right okay, now all right no problem okay now you turn on the next layer you repeat the same thing you go to two second click the stopwatch for position go to one second you move it up click and drag up until you don't see okay then you turn on the next second layer the third layer from the bottom up you go to three second click the stopwatch for position then you go to two second you move it up okay something like this so when i play back right so the first object will appear second object appear third object appear understand understand or not so the first object right we create from one second first click the stopwatch first frame move it up and then for the second object we go to two second click the stopwatch one second move it up for the third object go to three second click the stopwatch and then go to two second move it up understand understand or not guys and then you repeat for the rest of the objects go to position go to four second click the stopwatch then go to three second and then you move it up make sure you turn on the visibility so that you can see the object then i go to five second click the stopwatch for position i go to four second I click and drag to move it up until I don't see my object. Then followed by the next one, go to six second, click the stopwatch for position, five second, and then click and drag up. And then the last layer, go to seven second, click the stopwatch, then go back to six second click and drag up until you don't see the object so now when i play back from the first frame first object second object third object it will just appear something like this understand understand or not Can you try this? If you need me to show again, please let me know. Can you share your screen, SH? Can you share your screen? Uh, no, 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 no. You import it the wrong way. Okay, delete first. Delete everything in your project panel. Project panel. Where is your project panel? Uh huh. The infographic, the infographic folder, delete, select, and then press delete. Mm, press delete in your keyboard. Delete. The layers also, the folder, delete. Okay, delete. you go to import. File. Okay, the mistake that you have done is you check the sequence. Choose the first file, let's say, 02. Mm -hmm. Can you see that? Illustrator PDF EPS sequence. It needs to be unchecked. Sequence option. Okay, it needs to be unchecked. If you check right, it will import as a video footage. Okay, it's unchecked. Okay, now import as change to composition retail layer sizes. 
click import yes then double click the composition okay oh okay thank you sir all right no problem. if you need me to show again please let me know if done please let me know any problem please let me know and if you notice from my timeline right i can see only position how about the other attribute i don't see right so you just select your layer and then you press p p for position so easier you don't have to see all the anchor point the scale rotation and all that you can save some space there your timeline space animate layer six you mean the first one is it uh, yes okay all right so what i do i close all this okay first thing so that i don't get confused huh? i close all this visibility the layers visibility live with the layer six only and then i go to expand this or i can also press p when i select the layer six and then i press p in my keyboard i only see the position all right and then let's say i remove first my keyframe huh? i remove keyframe first thing i go to one second one s okay and then i click the stopwatch for position then i move my time to my first frame means time zero zero and then i can click and drag up the second value second is y value you just click and drag up something like this so when you play it will be animated okay and then followed by the seven layer right layer number seven here and then turn on the visibility press p for position you go to two second okay earlier layer six we go to one second we click stopwatch now layer seven here go to two second click stopwatch and then go back to one second move it up okay can you try then you repeat for the rest of the layers so the arrangement will be arrangement of the keyframe will be something like this okay thank you sir all right anyone done please let me know any problem let me know uh, sir my screen appear big i don't know how to undo uh, can you share screen okay oh okay you double click your layer okay when you double click your layer it will open up that object only okay can you see on top there there is a in composition infographic 02 and then yeah. beside that there is layer layer 10 you close the layer layer 10 there is a small x there mm, there is a x, small x okay. yes close it yeah yeah all right yes sure sh share your screen share it again uh wait now can you see my screen or not yeah i can and what happened now when i animate now you see no you haven't moved it up you only have one keyframe you only oh. have keyframe for two objects the rest of the objects you don't have keyframe so you go to two second you go to two second now you select the layer number eight, number eight. layer eight uh-huh you have to move it up the this y one. value the position y value yeah this yes one. click and drag up okay then you go to three second now layer nine move it up layer nine yeah. nine wait wait uh, okay okay all right move it up okay then go to four second layer 10 layer 10 yeah move it up yep then some more continue 
Five seconds. <coughs> yep. <coughs> okay, play now. Okay, very good. Okay, thank you. Sir. Okay, so for animation, you need to have two keyframes at least. Okay, one keyframe, it will not move. And also different value. All right, now, now, shall I continue? Or do you need time? Need time. The rest, how about the others? Shall I continue or you need time? Okay, Alicia, you are done. Huh? You already mentioned done, huh? so you can continue. How about the rest? Those who didn't reply, done. Okay, Gayatri done. Alicia done. Who else done? Okay, so please take a look here. Please take a look here. Samuel, please take a look first. Okay, here you see this animation, right? It moving like a you know PowerPoint. Okay, not interesting. If you export as a video and then you show to some someone, right? They say you did this with PowerPoint, is it? All right. So it doesn't look interesting. So what you can do is you adjust the the graph of the animation. Okay. For example, here. Okay. When I select all my layers here, right? Okay. Or I can select one layer and then I press Control A. Control A is to select all. Okay. After that, I press U in my keyboard so that I only see my keyframes. Okay. I select all my layer. I press U one time, no keyframe. I press U again. U is to show the keyframe. Okay, if you remember, I press P for position. Okay, the, the alphabet of the, the attribute name. For example, A for anchor point, P for position, S for scale, R for rotation, T for opacity. And then U is to show the keyframe. All right. So I repeat, I select all my layer, I press S in my keyboard. Can you see this? My scale attribute is visible. If I press R, R for rotation, my rotation attribute is visible now. If I press U, for example, I can see all the keyframe on the layer. Understand or not? Understand or not? No reply also. Okay, all right. Now what we do, okay, I'm going to select the first layers keyframe here, two keyframe. How to select? You click and drag from the empty space, you drag like that, it will be in blue color. Or you just select one keyframe, hold your shift key and then select the second keyframe. So both keyframe will be highlighted. After that, what we do is we right click on the keyframe. On the keyframe means you bring your cursor on top of one of the keyframe, then you right click. Then you go to keyframe assistant, easy is. Okay, easy is shortcut is F9. You don't have to right click and then go to keyframe assistant, easy is. You just highlight and then you press F9. Okay, to make it easy is. For example, when I choose easy is right, the icon will be changed. Okay, the diamond shape changed to something like a sand clock. All right. So here, after you have done easy is, you go to click this graph editor. Can you see this graph editor? You click. And then you click at this position. We'll be able to see a graph. Okay, maybe your graph will be something like this. Okay, you see two color, red color and green color. But what you do is you right click anywhere in your graph, you choose edit speed graph so that you see a white color line, something like this. Okay, after you see this, you click on the line here, the white color line, you will see there is a yellow color handle. You click and drag the one on the uh, right hand side, drag it to the left until it doesn't move. Don't move up and down. Don't move up and down, just click and drag in a straight line, something like this. Okay, I repeat one more time. I undo first. Close the this thing. I zoom out. Select both keyframe. You press F9 for easy is. I press F9, it's already changed. Then I click my graph editor. 
I will get something like this, a colorful uh, red color and a green color. I don't want red and green. I want white color. How? You right click and then choose edit speed graph. Okay, if your graph is not very big enough, right? So you can click this button here, fit all graph to view. Okay, and then you click at the white color line. You click and drag this yellow color handle to the left hand side. And the one on the right hand side, click and drag to the, uh, the one on the left hand side, drag to the right. Okay, so you get a something like this. So when you try to play back, right? Okay, you need to play back uh, on your computer uh, so that you can see how, what effects do you actually get. And you need to repeat this for all the layers. Can I not? Is it too much? Do you need me to repeat? Oh, sorry, sir. I'm not clear. Okay. Okay, I'll repeat one more time. So what you do? Okay, what you do? First thing, you highlight all your keyframes. Okay, for example, can you see my cursor now? Yeah. You click and then drag. Can you see all the keyframe become blue color? Yes. Then press F9. Can you do that first? Okay. Okay, everyone, please select all the keyframes and then press F9 in your keyboard. Done? Any question? Andy, are you done? All right, all right. Okay. After you make it easy is, okay, F9 is easy is, uh, okay, after you make it easy is, so what you do, uh, SH, can you share your screen now, faster? Faster a bit. Okay, okay. I can't find my Zoom already. <laughs> <laughs> hmm? You Wait. use the can or not? Uh, oh, okay. okay this one, see? this one. Okay, press F9 in your keyboard. You didn't select your layer 6. How to select? Shift click. Mm, press U. Press U again. Okay. You didn't select the, the last two keyframes there. Hold your shift and click the two diamond shape. Okay. Press F9 in your keyboard. Mm, I need to press shift F9 or what? No, no, just F9. Can you see there is a key F9? Yes. Press. Ah, yes, got got. Okay. okay. Thank you, sir. Right. Ah, thank you. Okay, now you select positions for layer six. You click at position of layer six. Then you go to graph editor. Can you do that? Click the position of layer 6, then go to Graph Editor. Done? Sir. 
I click on position on layer 6, but how come it is not selected? Here, here, the position. Click at the word position of layer 6. Yes, my all layers selected already. How, how come? Uh, then click outside. Click at the bottom here. Click at the empty oh, area. Okay, okay. Can, can, then can. click at the position. Oh, okay, can. thank you, sir. Then click at the graph editor. Can we click at the graph editor, guys, everyone? Yes, no? Yes. Okay, after you click the graph editor, you right click anywhere on the graph editor. This is your graph editor. You can see some great lines, right? You right click and then you choose edit speed graph. Right click and then choose edit speed graph. Can you do that now? Done. Uh, sir, can I share my screen? Yeah, I can. Lost. I don't know why it appears like this. That, that's correct. That's correct. Click at the position of layer 6. Hmm. And then right click on the graph editor. The graph, the grid line. Right click on the grid line. Yeah. Click again, graph editor. Yeah. Bring your cursor to the grid line. Oh, okay. That is your yeah. grid line. There, right? Uh, right click. Yeah. Edit speed graph. Yep. Okay. okay, and then click fit all graph to view. Can you see at the bottom there? Go to the bottom. Okay, some more to the to the right hand side. Right, 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 right. Yeah, click. Okay. Okay, now now take a look at my screen. Take a look at my screen. Okay, again, uh, I repeat, uh, you click at the position of the layer six. Then you already have this graph editor. The grid line here, this is your graph editor. So you right click and then choose edit speed graph. And then you click at this button here. Fit all graph to view. You will get the graph very big. Then you click on this white color line. You will get these two handles here. One on the left and one on the right hand side. The yellow color handle. You click and drag the handle almost to the center here. Click and drag, click and drag. And then click again, fit all graph to view. So you get something like this. Can you do that? Click on the white color line. You will see two handles, yellow color handle. Just click and drag the handle so that your graph shape will become something like this. Okay, and be done. Okay, you repeat that for all the other layers. All right, so layer six, done. Now, let's say I click the position of layer seven, and then I go to fit all graph to view. Click on the white color line here, the graph, and then click and drag. Click and drag. Done. Then go to layer seven, layer eight position. Fit all graph to view. Click on the white color line. And then click and drag here. Click and drag here. And then fit all graph to view just to check. That's all. Then you just repeat. Click at the position, following layer. Fit all graph to view. Click on the white color line. And then click and drag. Click and drag. Can you try first? And then you repeat. Okay, try first, try first. If done, let me know. If done all layers, then you try to play back. Then you'll know how it looks like. If you have a problem, let me know. Don't waste your time. Anyone got any issues? Let me know, please. Or if anybody done, let me know also. Okay. 
Nisha done. Okay, Andy done. Can you see the difference when you play back? Do you see any difference when you play back? All right. Okay, so basically what we have done here, okay, the initially when we add keyframe, right, it will move in linear movement. All right. So what we did is we uh, easy is first, press F9, easy is, and then at the graph editor, what we are doing actually, we are changing the speed. At the beginning, it's very slow. And then in the middle, it's very fast. And then ending also slow. That's what we have done. All right, so from this graph, when the, when the graph is very almost flat, right, means it's slow. When the graph is very steep, that means it's very fast. Okay, graph data, dia perlahan. Graph curam, dia laju. That's it. So both sides, beginning slow dulu, kemudian laju, kemudian slow balik. All right. So when you play, then, then you'll able to see the difference. Sir, okay. Yeah. Um, what happened if I bring the yellow dot uh, to the center? You mean the yeah. middle dot? Yeah. You move the middle dot. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Okay. All right. All right. No worries. It won't change anything. Okay, now, now, okay, please take a look at my screen, everyone, everyone, I zoom out, press minus in your keyboard to zoom out. Now, if you want to make it faster, okay, for example, I select all my keyframes here again, and then to make it uh, faster or slower, you hold your alternate key in your keyboard, and then click and drag the last keyframe to stretch the entire keyframe. Let's say, for example, I change it to, let's say, about two seconds. The entire thing is within two seconds. So when I play, then it will be very fast. Okay, I undo. Again, one more time, I repeat. I close my, to close the graph editor, you just click again the same icon. Okay, close the graph editor. Highlight all the keyframe. Press alternate in your keyboard, ALT, yeah? and then hold your alternate, and then click and drag the last keyframe to stretch your keyframes all together. Okay, that's it, done. Okay, let me show you how to export this as a video. Okay, because we are running out of time, then later on you can refer back to the recorded video. Okay, to export this video into a MP4 file, you need to have Adobe Media Encoder. Who already installed Media Encoder? Anyone here? Already installed Media Encoder. Okay, great. Okay, let me just uh, share my entire screen. I go to File, and then I go to Export, Add to Adobe Media Encoder Queue. File, Export, Add to Adobe Media Encoder Queue. So what will happen is, it will open up the Media Encoder software. All right, it's loading now. If you have a slow computer, right? Okay, let's say well, maybe the hard disk is slow then it will take a very long time for this thing to load. Okay, after it opens the software, then it will load the, the composition. Okay, still loading. Okay, now it's already loaded. Okay, in my case, it's already loaded. Okay, I don't change any setting. I leave it as H.264, match source high bitrate. I only change the location where I'm going to save my rendered file, the video file. So you click the blue color text, output file, click the blue color text, and then choose your location. Let's say I save it in my desktop. Okay, I choose desktop, Javinish After Effects, and then I go to save, maybe change the name to whatever, click save, and then start queue. Can you see the, the green color button here, like a play button? That is to start queue. And then you click, it will start to render your project file. Okay? And you need to have media encoder in order for you to export as MP4 file. All right? Understand? Understand or not? All right. Okay, understand or not? You follow first. 
All right. So again, if you want to export to other format, can. Okay, but why MP4? Because it's the file size is very small and the quality is also very good. Okay, that's why we use MP4 file. All right. If you don't use an MP4, right? Okay, you can export it as an AVI file or a MOV file, but the file size is going to be extremely big. We don't want that. All right. Clear, everyone? Okay, any question or not? Before we, I'm going to give you a quiz. Okay, you need to complete the quiz within 10 minutes. Okay, the highest mark will get the book. Uh, highest mark, if let's say highest mark, we have more than one person, right? Then the first who submitted the form will get the book. Awesome, awesome. Okay, don't worry. Okay, I still have another two more books to give away. All right, I still have another two more books to give away. So for the upcoming classes also, I'm going to give it away. All right, so uh, do continue with this uh, classes. So I'll be updating for the next class. Okay, April, you can uh, you can message me your your address. Okay, I'll post it to you. All right. Okay, guys, thank you so much. <clears throat> okay, congrats again to April, and uh, Go Siu Hua also same scoring. Congrats also, but unfortunately, uh, the first one who scored the highest will get. All right, you can try again on the next lesson and make sure you pay attention. To all the information. Actually, all the questions I already covered actually. Okay, so thank you so much again. Okay, thanks guys. Okay, you may leave now. I'll be sharing the recorded session as well. All right, thank you, thank you.